Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 19 of Hypervolemia. Last episode, we were working on a brand new mana generation setup, this one over here. And since the end of last episode, I've gone ahead and just made a few more of these floating Kakimura's flowers, as well as put down the remainder of our three Elven mana spreaders that we were given a few episodes back as part of a quest reward. And I also started to try and hand in some of the quests uh, from the second chance quest line, these ones all the way down here and I handed a few of them in but they weren't without their issues so some of them like the lava the water and the sludge worked just fine all the ones that were liquids going directly into a QDS worked perfectly fine however some of the quests like this one down here for essence tanks and this one up here for iron tanks uh, had a bit of an issue I'm not quite sure if it's a glitch in the mod pack or, or what but we couldn't hand these in there was no manual submit button and it said that it was a QDS quest and the way that QDS quests work uh, even with items is usually you get a QDS, you stick a hopper on top of it, you put the item into the hopper after you've assigned the, uh, the QDS to your quest. Uh, so for example, let me see if I've got a QDS in the system here. Quest delivery system. So if we take this and we plunk it down right about here, uh, if we go into our quest book, we should be able to select one of our quests. For example, this one is one that we're probably going to have uh, the same problem with. We could select task and then we can right click on the QDS, but when you put items into the QDS, it just eats them and doesn't actually count it towards the quest. Uh, I saw a few people in the comment section also having this issue asking me uh, how I was going to go about handing in the essence tanks because they just weren't working. Uh, and so I'm not quite sure what you're supposed to do. I just put them all uh, into the QDS and when it didn't work, I did slash HQM edit and you do have to have cheat mode on for this to work but basically uh, if you do slash hqm edit you'll get this op edition of the quest bug uh, and then you can just shift right click on quests to automatically complete them i am of course not going to complete that quest because we haven't done it i'm going to try and do all the quests legitimately but if they're not going to hand in i'm just going to have to void the items and then cheat the quest in using the the slash hqm edit command and that's exactly what i did for the essence quest and the modern iron quest but unfortunately uh, we ran into yet another speed bump between episodes and that is this quest down here the gold quest. I was hoping that this would be an optional side quest, kind of like the one for Brian over here and the one from Ender down here, but it turns out it's not. And if we want to get to this quest over here, we have to hand in a thousand buckets worth of gold. A thousand buckets. Each of those buckets requires 14,000 millibuckets of gold to fill, and each golden ingot creates 108 millibuckets of gold, which means by my calculation, we need about 120,000 golden ingots in order to get a thousand tanks worth of of gold that is ridiculous and right now just for a comparison we have 600 ingots of gold we need a hundred and twenty thousand thousand ingots of gold not quite sure if that's a misprint or if that's just like deliberately a super hard quest uh, but needless to say we're not going to be doing that quest in today's episode and unfortunately that means that we're not going to be able to use this quest here to get access to that crystal cluster but on the bright side i have found a few quests within the batania quest line uh, that give us some terror steel and will hopefully make our lives a little bit easier in terms of obtaining all of this terror steel to make all of these crystal clusters so uh, if we look over here now we've made the portal of alfine we can start to work on this this side of the quest book over here. The first quest wants us to make one of these elementium. I have made some elementium uh, between episodes, and I'll show you how to make it in just a second. We made some pixie dust a while back for the Kekimura's flowers. Uh, Dragonstone we're about to make, and then also Alf Glass is one that we're about to make as well. So basically, the way that all of those work is they are their mana forms put into the portal. So for example, uh, ender pearls, if you put them into the mana pool, become mana pearls, and then if you put them into the portal, they become pixie dust. Uh, mana steel, if you put it into the portal, you gotta put it in two at a time, will become elementium. So if I throw two ingots into here, I get one elementium back. Uh, if we take a mana diamond and throw that to the portal, we get ourselves a dragonstone back. And then I'm fairly certain that if we get some mana glass and throw that into the portal, it should turn into some of that elf glass. I've actually never made elf glass for anything before, so I'm hoping that this is how it works. And it completely is, so we can go ahead, jump back into the quest book, hand in that quest, which is done, but not done. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, it is done. There's just no reward for that one. That is a quest that gives no reward back. Okay, that's a first. I've never seen that before, but that's fine. Uh, I also forgot to mention that I have put down two more mana pools over here uh, that are drawing mana out of these mana pools because we were producing more than enough mana to keep this portal open, and we were kind of not doing anything. Like, all of these flowers uh, were just not producing. They were producing mana, but they couldn't send it anywhere, so they stopped producing mana. Uh, and so what I've done is I've thrown down two more of these mana pools over here that are just kind of like a buffer, uh, collecting extra mana that we can use later on down the line. 
game. And what we're going to do at the start of today's episode is go ahead and get some of these mana tablets. Actually, I was going to make one, but we did get one uh, as a reward for one of the earlier quests. And basically what we can do with this is if we drop it on top of a mana pool like so. These ones are all full. Uh, if we drop it on a mana pool and then shift right click with a wand of the forest, you can change which way the mana flows. So for example, right now the mana tablet is putting mana into the mana pool. Uh, if I was to shift right click again, then the mana would start to go out of the mana pool back into the mana tablet. Let me see if I can do this right. Yeah, there we go. So that was going back out uh, into the mana tablet. Uh, and so we can use these mana tablets to actually transfer mana, for instance, from these mana pools over to this mana pool to make a bunch of terror steel. And so what I'm going to do now, guys, real quick, is I'm going to go ahead and try and make as much terror steel as I possibly can. I'm going to move as much mana as I can from over here over to this mana pool. I'm also going to empty out all of these mana tablets that we just got as a reward from the quest. I'll be back in a second. And a little while later, we now have nine more terror steel. So if we come back over to our AE system now, I think that takes us to a total of 15. Oh, we got 30. We got 13 terror steel. We need a total of 27 in order to make the three blocks required to make the three other crystal cluster blocks to get a tier 6 altar. So we're still going to need quite a bit more mana. But uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of today's episode, uh, I found a few more quests under the Britannia section, such as this one here, and uh, that will give us a block of terror steel as a reward for actually handing in all of these quests. And thankfully, this one is not too hard to do. So for this, we need to hand in four blocks of elementium, five blocks of mana steel, and four of these Gaia pylons. So for those of you uh, who are familiar with Britannia, you'll know what these Gaia pylons and all of this stuff here uh, is used for. And that is covered in the next quest here, which is the one that requires us to hand in a Gaia spirit ingot. And if we really wanted to, we could go all the way down uh, and try and hand in a Gaia spirit ingot for this quest here and get the other two blocks of terror steel. This does require that we fight the Gaia. It's a bit of a hard fight, but we might be able to do it with our bound armor and bound blade, possibly. And uh, we might look into it. But before we do that, I realize that my portal has turned off. And that is because these two are completely out of mana. So we can't quite do any of these quests yet. Because in order to do these quests, uh, we need quite a bit of elementium. And now the portal's off, uh, we can't really do that. So whilst we wait for those mana pools to fill back up so we can turn the portal back on, uh, let's have a look at actually making some of the other stuff and some of the items required to make those crystal clusters. Because although it may seem like it, it's not 100% Britannia. So if we come back over here, here, uh, the first thing that we need to make, one of the most important parts of the whole thing, uh, is actually making the dire crafting table, which is used uh, as we mentioned before, to actually craft the thing. This is what allows you to craft uh, in such a big crafting grid. And to make this, we need eight of these crystal matrix ingots, as well as one double compressed crafting table, which requires a bunch of compressed crafting tables, which requires a bunch of normal crafting tables, which are all made using bones. And now I think about it, I bet we don't have anywhere near enough bones to make all of that. Uh, by the looks of things here, we don't. I'm not quite sure why we have two different types of bone. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but we've got 28 crafting tables, uh, which I am fairly certain is not enough to make one double compressed crafting table. It is not at all. Uh, so we're going to have to go out and get some more bones. But before we do that, uh, let's make some of these crystal matrix ingots. For these, we need four of these diamond lattices as well as some nether cubes. And of course, the way that we're getting nether cubes uh, is via the alchemical chemistry set and a wither skeleton skull. So uh, let's go ahead and grab a bunch of these and take them over to the alchemical chemistry set, throw them in with the blood orb. That should start to make Make some stuff. I'm not quite sure how much. We should probably grab uh, the division sigil here. How much do we have in terms of life points? We've got over 6 million, so that should be able to make quite a few nether stars, possibly even enough uh, to actually make this. How many do we need? We need 16 in total. That might work. We'll see. We'll give it a second to work through that. Whilst we're waiting for that, uh, I think we could probably go ahead and make a bunch of these lattices, like so. 64 is more than enough. Uh, so what we're going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to wait for all these nether stars to finish crafting up in here. I'm going to go out and try and get a bunch of bones that all old-fashioned way by breaking down as many of these bone blocks as we can and I'll be back in a second and a lot of bone breaking later we now have a bunch of bones so if we come back over to our AE system we should be able to craft that up fairly easily into a double compressed crafting table like so let's grab as many of those as we can throw them back in craft them all into compressed crafting tables like so and craft all of those together into a double compressed crafting table Nice, we can then throw that in here. I also realize that we have a ton of nether stars already in here from all of the blocks of nether stars that we got a couple of episodes back. But uh, this thing over here has also gone ahead and made me 14 nether cubes uh, before we actually ran out of life essence. So I've gone ahead and put that back in there. That's now charging up with some more life essence, putting it into our life pool. So let's throw all of those into there. Let's craft up at least eight of these crystal matrix ingots, like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And once we got those, we can do something like this. 
this. Nice. And we're going to take this crafting table down, I guess, like maybe here for now. And if we look inside, that is the massive crafting table and that we have to put all of our stuff in in order to make the crystal cluster. And I think at this point as well that we should have enough mana in these mana pools over here to reopen the portal to Alfheim. I know before I drastically overestimated how much mana we actually needed to open the portal. And so I'm going to do something like this. And it seems to work just fine. Actually, it seems to use very little mana to open it up. So I'm kind of surprised, but it seems to be working fine. And uh, so what we should be able to do now is try and complete some of these quests over here and try and get this block of Terra Steel, maybe even uh, these other two blocks of Terra Steel down here. But uh, to start with, we need to make a bunch of Elementium tools as well as a bunch of Elementium armor. Uh, so for the armor to start with, we're going to need at least 24 Elementium. And as each Elementium requires two mana steel to make, that means we're going to need at least 48 iron to make this happen that's going to be a lot of mana i'm not a hundred percent sure if we're going to have enough mana uh, in our mana pools to actually make this happen but we can give it a go we'll take all 48 of those and try and see if we can get uh, enough from all of these how many can we get out of this one we got a surprising number. We're at 22. That's fine. Let's come over. Let's try these middle two first because these ones are not keeping the portal open. Uh, so that's that one. Let's try this one. That takes us up to 50. We actually had more than enough to make that happen. That is fantastic. So let's throw all of this through to there. That should give us back at least 25 of these Elementium ingots. So I say at least exactly 25 of these Elementium ingots. We got 26. We might have had one just lying in there at some point. And not quite sure. But if we bring this back to our crafting table, we can go ahead and do something like this. Get ourselves a chest plate. Go like this. Get the leggings. Do something like this. Get the boots. And finally, something like this. And get ourselves the helmet. Nice. Now, these have a durability of 200 i'm not quite sure i don't think they're as powerful as the bound armor that we have here but i'm not 100 percent sure i'm just gonna put them in the system for now and i'm gonna rock this armor here because it gives us the jump boost and we also have night vision with our bound armor as well uh, so we can come in here we can claim eight of these elementium ingots back and now we need to make these guys over here so for this we're gonna need three elementium for the pickaxe one more for the shovel that's four three more for the other axe that takes up to seven and then i'm assuming two more for the shears that takes up to nine which makes me think that we might only need two more iron here to make two more mana steel and one more elementium to actually complete this quest possibly so let's go over to here let's see we can't do it oh we can do it in there actually wow this one has a surprising amount of mana in it but we'll do that we'll throw you in there and you in there that gets to the ninth one and now we might be able to make this happen although i'm fairly certain that to make any of these elementium tools we actually need elven wood uh, if we look at the elementium pickaxe yeah we need some dream wood uh, twigs here which are made using dream wood which is made as you guessed it by putting some living wood through the elven portal so uh, thankfully we got a bunch of living wood as part of a quest a few episodes back so we could take some of this we actually had 48 in our inventory already uh, we can go back over to here and for now i think i might as well just go ahead and throw like half of that in here because uh, we can also use this to make these elven mana spreaders which is exactly what i did to make these extra two down here for these mana pools uh, so it's not really going to go to waste at any point in the future and plus uh, the living wood is not really all that hard to make to begin with so wasting it uh, is not really too big of a deal uh, but let's go ahead and make at least four of those i don't think the shears uh, are going to require any of it but it's good to have nonetheless and then we should be able to fairly easily make those two i then realize that we need at least more than one twig per craft so let's go ahead and make uh, two more for the axe do something like this and then i'm assuming that the shears are just two elementium and it is exactly that uh, so if we take all of those we get ourselves another quest bit <laughs> so uh, we have to do gouge 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 and to do that we need an elementium sword as well as a crystal bow what do we need for an elementium sword it is exactly the same as you would expect uh, just in sword form so let's go ahead and grab one more of these dreamwood twigs what else did we need we also needed a crystal bow i'm not quite sure how we're going to make a crystal bow but i'm assuming it's going to require quite a bit of elementium what do we need for a crystal bow we need three mana infused string two dragon stones one living wood twig so let's grab ourselves some string we've already got one mana infused string so we're only going to need two more of those we've already got some mana diamonds on us so making the dragon stone is going to be fairly easy all we need to do is one two and uh, we actually already had a dragon stone on us as well so that wasn't a hundred percent necessary uh, was it just oh that's not working was it just mana string or was it like special elven mana string that we need to throw through the portal i think it was just mana string i'm going to do this in like a different one like so 
And now, I think that's pretty much everything we need to actually make this happen. We should already have the stuff to make the living wood twig back in our crafting terminal. And so, if we do something like that, but with a living wood twig, we should... Be good to go. Nice. So that is that quest complete, and that should let us claim the reward. And now, and now the only thing between us and this block of terra steel is four blocks of mana steel, five blocks of mana steel, four blocks of elementium, and four of these Gaia pylons. Thankfully, the Gaia pylons uh, are actually not all too hard to make. To make them, we need two pixie dust, two elementium, and one mana pylon. Of course, we've made the mana pylons before. They're super easy to make. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go away. I'm going to wait until we have a bit more mana, because right now, I don't think we have enough to make anywhere near all of that stuff that he just requested uh, but i'm gonna go away i'm gonna wait till we get some more mana once we've got it i'll probably make all of the uh, the mana steel and the elementium and i'll be back in a second and again a little while later we now have a bunch more mana steel so uh, i think what we can probably do now is craft all of this up into mana steel blocks and you can also by the way uh, make these directly by just throwing iron blocks into the mana pool the only reason i made each and every ingot individually is because i was a little concerned about running out of uh, mana in the pools or by the portal over there i didn't want the portal to shut down because of course we need the portal in order to be able to make all of the elementium but for example uh, we can just throw two of these mana steel blocks straight into the portal and it gives us one block of elementium back so if we do that a few more times that should get us fairly easily the four blocks of elementium we need for that and we've also now got the five blocks of mana steel we need for that thankfully we do get to keep all of these as well uh, it's just a detect quest it's not actually a hand in quest uh, and now finally the last thing that we need is of course this Gaia pylon over here so uh, let me go ahead we need four of these Gaia pylons actually so which means we're gonna need at least eight pixie dust here we currently have seven mana pearls flipping heck ever so close if we come back over here we can quickly grab uh, one more of our 1777 ender pearls though. so that's not all too bad we can then throw one in there we can then throw all eight of these directly into the portal like so that's gonna get us a bunch of pixie dust back like that it also got us a dragon stone or did we already have that i'm not too sure uh, but once we got that i'm fairly certain that we're pretty much good to go we've already got all of this elementium that we made for a quest we can just put that directly back in the system and, and then i'm pretty sure these guys are fairly easy to make anyway so making four of those should be fairly simple if we do something like this get ourselves three more like that stick all of those in the system and go boom boom and boom nice we can then go into our quest book and claw we can't do it we actually have to kill the gaia spirit in order for it to work oh i was really hoping that we would get these results just from oh my god goodness where did a creeper come from i was really hoping that we would get to claim these rewards without having to kill the gaia and then we'd only have to kill it if we wanted to complete these quests over here however uh, it would seem that is not the case so we need to kill the gaia so if we go over uh, to our lexicon britannia here and we type in uh, gaia let's go to let's go back and let's go to the index uh, and we type in gaia and uh, we need to do the ritual of the gaia and to do this we of course need the gaia pylons it's already told us about that we need to set this up over here so uh, let me first like find a place i'm not going to do it in my base because this thing is a pain in the backside uh, to actually fight so let's find like a nice space uh, to actually go ahead and fight this guy i might have to clear a bit of space out all right, so once we've cleared some space, all we need to do is click Visualize. We can then see uh, exactly where this is going to be. If I go ahead and just right-click there, and I should place that down. I want to just visualize it right here. Is that visualized? It's visualized. Okay, so this one is actually in the floor. I could actually, I guess, build it into the floor if I really wanted to. Uh, but we are going to need, I think, eight, maybe nine. I'm not quite sure if you need one underneath the beacon there. Uh, but we'll get ourselves nine of these uh, iron blocks here. One beacon. Uh, we already have the four Gaia pylons. So all of that stuff seems fairly easy. We have a bunch of nether stars. So getting the, the, the beacon is not going to be a challenge whatsoever. We also, I think, have a ton of obsidian essence. Uh, we totally do. We also have a bunch of obsidian just ready to go as well. So let's take out a bunch of that. That. let's actually we don't need to take out that that's for the beacon let's take out a bunch of iron blocks like so we need nine of those once we've got those we need to get ourselves the beacon like i said before fairly easy to do we should have everything we do so we can take that uh, we've already got the gaia pylons i think uh, i was doing some testing i've been killing a lot of mobs with my atomic disassembler instead of my bound blade i think the atomic disassembler might actually be a stronger weapon than the bound blade i'm not 100 percent sure about that uh, whilst i'm fighting i might start with the atomic disassembler and then try and use the bound blade to see which one's better uh, but i'm not quite sure if that's going to work at all uh, but let's go ahead and put this thing down let's clear a bit of space it's kind of hard to do with the, the visualization there, but 
If we do something like that, we can go ahead and put down all of these blocks of iron like so. We can then stick the beacon down right on top like that. And then finally, the only thing that we need to do uh, is actually put these pylons down. I don't think it matters uh, if I have these blocks here at all. Uh, but we're about to find out whether or not we have uh, the power, the skill, and the HP to actually fight this thing. Uh, so let's put all of these down like this. Structure complete. All right. Um, I don't know how we activate this. At all. <laughs> I guess we should look uh, into the Lexica Britannia. The only time I've ever done this before uh, is with other people. To start the ritual, simply shift right click on the beacon block with a terror steel ingot. Take a step back and prepare for the fight of your life. Okay. Well, let's head back then. Let's get ourselves at least one terror steel ingot. And uh, let's see if we can do this. The good thing is that if we, or the good news is that if we can do this, I think we should be able to get uh, all of the terror steel, like all three terror steel blocks from quests instead of having to use these ones here, which would be pretty cool. Uh, and then we should be pretty much good to go. So uh, let's. Let's leave that there. Let's go ahead and right click with this. Shift right click. Okay, we do get some amazing music, by the way. I love it. Okay, but this is going to be the fight of the life. Okay, this thing seems pretty good. Uh, it does spawn quite a bit of mobs, and we're also destroying the floor as we go. Um, oh my goodness, I'm not quite sure. Our armor seems to be holding up fairly well. We're trying to kill ourselves, for as we're wondering. We're killing this. Oh, we died. We totally died. Okay, uh, I think we can just go back. I think we can, you can, you can hear the music in the distance. Uh, it, it gets louder as you get closer to it. But I'm fairly certain that we can just keep going back and possibly kill this guy eventually. Can we do that? The music's still here. But the spirit's not. Okay, so the music's still going. I took a quick look into the Lexica Britannia again because uh, we're, I, I don't know if we can actually beat the guy with our current set of armor, and it recommends that we use Elementium armor that is fully enchanted. And I figured we've got a bunch of levels. We might as well try it, you know. An enchantment table uh, is not actually all too expensive, and using the, our levels here that we've acquired throughout the course of the series is also uh, not really going to matter too much because I don't think there's actually much else that we can use them for. Uh, and so going and doing something like this shouldn't be too bad. We do need to make uh, some paper real quick, which thankfully... Uh, due to our sugarcane farm is super easy. Uh, let's go ahead and make a book. I, I think that's the, the most attempts it's taken me uh, to ever make a book. Uh, but actually, speaking of that, we are going to need some bookshelves to make this happen, aren't we? So, uh, I'm going to go away, guys. I'm going to make myself a bunch of bookshelves, find an area to put this enchantment table, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, I've managed to make myself a bunch of bookshelves here. I've stuck down the enchantment table. Uh, we've only got 49 levels, so we can't quite put level 30 enchantments on everything. I'm definitely going to put a level 30 enchantment on this chest plate. That gave us blast protection and unbreaking. I'm not quite sure how good that was uh, comparatively to how it could have been. Uh, and then we've got 19 levels left. Let's go for a level 8 enchantment on these, protection 1. I guess that's not terrible. Uh, and then let's go for like, we've got 11, I guess 10 could be useful. I uh, will go for it. But that does mean that we're definitely not enchanting these unless we can get like a level 1 enchant, which to be fair is probably not going to be very good. In all honesty, I do not enchant all that often, so my knowledge of whether or not there even is a level 1 enchant uh, is pretty much zero. The whole reason why the Lexica Britannia recommends these is because it says they're a chance for pixies to apply potion effects. And uh, looking at the wiki, apparently they can like maybe attack the enemy as well, uh, which could give us a bit, of a, a bit of a help. It does make us look cool as heck. And so what we're going to do, it does cost us, by the way, a terror steal uh, every single time we fight. We have to shoot right click we actually lose the terror steel when we do fight the Gaia uh, but we're gonna try this again we, we died even faster like way too fast I did it! I flippin' did it! Jeez! 
Whew! <laughs> that took a good few attempts. This place is a mess and looks like a bit of a graveyard with all of these flipping things around. Flipping heck! That took a good couple of attempts, but uh, in the end, the way that I did it is I used my bound armor. It seems to be worlds better uh, than the elementium armor, and I brought four of these notched apples in uh, when I came into the fight. These are made using just golden blocks and apples, and with that, with the regeneration given by that, and, and all of the debuffs from that as well, it seemed to work out quite nicely, and we now have ourselves uh, eight of these Gaia spirits, so uh, if we first of all go ahead and just dump some of this stuff uh, into the AE system, for example, all of this elementium armor that's now enchanted, but completely useless, uh, we should be able to go into our quest book here, claim this reward. We have now killed the Gaia spirit. That gets us four more mana tablets, which are full of mana, as well as our first block of Terra Steel. We then have this quest down here, which wants us to hand in one Gaia Spirit. So let's quickly take a look at what it takes to make a Gaia Spirit. It is simply one Terra Steel surrounded by four Gaia Spirits. So if we come in here and do something exactly like that by first of all getting rid of all of this junk and then doing that, that gets us our first Gaia Spirit ingot. Uh, for completing that quest, we do get four Gaia Spirit back. It wants us to fight again? It says fight. It wants us to make a flug flugel? How the heck do I make that? Does it does any eye recognize its spelling? Oh, I see. So I did a quick look on the wiki, and the Ender Air Bottle added by the Mod Britannia is obtained by right-clicking with a glass bottle in the end. So when it says fight, uh, it wants us to go through to the end, fight the End Dragon, and then once we fought the End Dragon, get those bottles of air and uh, come back. And so that's how we're going to get the Fugal Tiara, uh, and then therefore unlock, I think, this quest down here, which will give us the other two blocks of Terra Steel. Oh, actually, it's already done. I don't think we can claim this request, though, even if we do get uh, a Dice of Fear, and I think, if I remember correctly, Dice of Fear are occasionally dropped from the Gaia, so we'd have to fight that guy uh, a few more times and just hope that we get a Dice of Fear. Uh, and so, instead, what I think we're going to do, we currently have eight Terra Steel. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away once again. I'm going to try and make the remaining ten Terra Steel that we need. We've got quite a bit of mana stored up in these mana tablets. We've got a little bit of mana in all these mana pools. So I'm going to try and pull it all together, make as much Terra Steel as I can, and I'll be back in a second. And finally, way, way, way too long later, we are making the final piece of Terra Steel that we need in order to make ourselves the third Crystal Cluster. So, we now have 16 in total. However, uh, over here in the quest book, we do have a quest up here uh, for making Terra Steel that actually gives us two Terra Steel ingots for completing it, which takes us up to a total of 18, which, if we come back to our crafting station over here, we can do something like this. And that gets us a total of three Terra Steel blocks. In order to make three Crystal Clusters, ting us up to four, which is exactly the amount that we need to make ourselves a TS Exalter. So, with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Hypovolemia there. Also, I had particle effects turned off that whole time. This thing looks so much cooler with particle effects turned on. Look at this. Jeez. Uh, but yeah, with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Hypovolemia there. Next time, we'll come back for episode 20. We'll get ourselves all of those crystal clusters. We'll also get all of the other items that we need, uh, apart from Terra Steel. Thankfully, the rest of the items are nowhere near as hard to get. We'll build the TS Exalter. I'll give out the world download. But like I said, with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode there. As always, Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time.